Welcome back everyone. In the last tutorial, we built the thunk to delete post and included extra reducers to handle lifecycle stages. The next thing we'll work on is persisting data sent to the Redux door. But you may be asking yourself, why do we need to persist data if we're using Redux Toolkit? Can't we just get data from the Redux door? Well, Redux Toolkit stores data in memory, which means data is lost when the page refreshes, the app reloads, or the browser session ends. Since the Redux store doesn't persist across sessions, which means the period of time a user interacts with your app in a single visit, the post would need to be refreshed from the API each time the application starts. To maintain data across page reloads and avoid unnecessary API calls, we can use local storage, session storage, or a more advanced solution like Redux Persist, which can persist Redux state in storage mediums like local storage or session storage. One key difference is using local storage alone requires manual handling to store and retrieve data, while Redux persists with local storage or some other storage medium automates this process by automatically saving and rehydrating Redux state to and from local storage. Back in tutorial nine, we used local storage and wrote code in the extra reducers whenever the lifecycle stage is changed to update retrieve state from local storage. And here we commented local storage out when we started using thunks. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Redux Persist with local storage, the default storage medium for Redux Persist. Redux Persist integrates with Redux Toolkit and offers more control and automation. Even in this small application, Using Redux Persist with local storage to store posts can reduce unnecessary API calls. Where Redux Persist really shines is for storing authentication tokens. For example, if we had a login system, Redux Persist would keep users logged in even after navigating to other pages or reloading the app. While we don't have a login system in place yet, our goal is to work on that in a future tutorial and then upgrade to a more advanced and secure storage medium. So since our application is basic, we're going to use Redux Persist with the default storage, local storage. So let's update this code using Redux Persist. Now, the first thing we need to do is install Redux Persist. So let's open up the terminal. So we're going to type npm install Redux Persist. Okay, and then we're going to head on over to the store. We're going to import it in the Redux store. So here, and we're going to import persist store from Redux persist, as well as persist reducer. And we're also going to import the default storage, which is local storage. So import storage from Redux persist library storage. And then here we're going to adjust the configuration right above the store configuration. Redux persist configuration. And that's going to be persist config equals, and we're going to have a key root, and then, and then for our storage, the storage is going to be the default storage, which is local, is the default storage, local storage. So that's what this storage represents here. And below storage, we are going to list the reducers that we want to persist. We're going to white list them and we only have posts. So we're going to include it here, but you know, we could include users posts or some other reducer that we want to persist. And now we're going to initiate it persist reducer, and we're going to pass in persist on fig and post reducer. We're going to name this, give it a name, persist reducer. So it initializes it and creates an instance of persist reducer. So we pass post reducer to the persist reducer. 
So now we can include it in the store, persist reducer. And what this does is it wraps the reducer. We imported persistor here at the top. Now persistor manages the life cycle of the persisted state and it connects your Redux store to the persistence layer, the storage medium. And in our case, that's local storage. So here at the bottom, we want to use it, I'm going to initiate it here and we're gonna pass it the store and we're gonna save it. Actually, we're gonna export it. Oh, it's persister and here we're gonna create an instance of it. So here we use it to manage persistence in the app, such as triggering rehydration of state or handling persistence of actions. So let's save this and npm run dev. Now let's take a look at that. Now Sean, let's see what the issue is. Already been declared. So this should be persisted. That's the instance and this should, we should be passing persisted reducer. And while I'm at it, we're going to be white listing posts. And now, so our post is showing, but we're getting this error, non-serialized values being detected in a path with a value of registered. So this error message is saying that we're trying to store a non-serializable value, like a function related to register within the Redux state during a persist operation. Since we confirmed that a function or path for register does not exist in our slides, we can ignore this register action during the serializability check without affecting other important actions. So let's go over to the code and here in the store, we can include a middleware and it's called get default middleware. We're going to get default middleware. And inside we're going to, then we're going to do a serializable check. And we're going to, we're going to ignore an action, which is, which is the register action. So let's save this. Go back over and it worked. So we fixed the error by ignoring the register action. And that's great. So this warning, this is not an error, this is a warning. It has to do with future updates to React Router DOM. So for now, we're going to ignore that and move to our next task. So the last thing we need to do is wrap our app, is wrap our app in PersistGate to ensure that the app waits for the persistent state to load before rendering. So let's open up the main JSX file. So first of all, we're going to import persist gate from Redux integration, this one here. And we're gonna also import the persister from the store. And going down below, we're going to wrap the app with persist gate. Move that up. And now we can save that. And we're going to include loading a loading crop and it's going to be null but it can be but it can be a loading spinner and that's what we'll show before the actual data loads this could also be a loading spinner this is what we'll show until the persistent state is fully rehydrated and the second property is going to be the persister and we are going to pass that in persister now let's save that so when we wrap the app with the persistent with the persist gate this enables redux persist to rehydrate the state on application load. So in order to use Redux Persist, you need to first set it up in the store and configure it. You also need to import Persist Gate in the main JSX file. So here back in our application, we see that our posts are hydrating, but how do we know that it's really working? How do we know that Redux Persist is really persisting our application? We have React Router DOM in place, which prevents refreshes, and we have all of these things in place to optimize our website. So how do we know that it's really working? And it's very difficult to see with a small application like the one we have. So to check if the application is working here in the store, I've commented out the Redux persist code in both the store and also in the main.jsx file. And we'll inspect the application using the local storage tab in the browser developers tool to see if it is working. I've commented out the Redux persist code in both the store as well as a main file. 
and we'll inspect the application in the local storage tab in the browser developer tool. So let's inspect that. And let's go over to the application and local storage. When we refresh that, we won't see any changes here, but let's go back over to the application and we're going to remove this code and re-enable the Redux persist code. And we'll do that. Now let's re-enable the Redux persist code. So let's just remove that. And then we can uncomment out this. We'll do the same, let's save that. We'll do the same in store. We'll remove our original code and we will re-enable the Redux persist code. Now let's save that one as well. We're going to go back over. And now when we refresh the browser, we see the persist root key and value, and we see that rehydration is set to true. So it is rehydrating our app. So we can close that. And now that we've confirmed that Redux persist is working, we can move to our next task. So with that, here's where we'll end our video today. If you found value in this tutorial so far, don't forget to like and share this video. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button. If you want to be the first to know, connect to the Hub, Source Coder Hub's community. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.